Hi, this is Ralph from EBS, uh, bass amps and effects, all the way from Sweden. And tell, tell us yourself, how, how you got started in the music business, who were your inspirations, who inspired you to want to be in music? Uh, okay, uh, well, I've been with EBS for 10 years, I work with uh, marketing and artist relations, uh, I have a, a background as a musician but uh, also in the ad advertising industry. Uh, I just love this job because it's it's a mix of uh, my all my interests in, in one job. So get to meet all these amazing musicians, get to do all my stuff that I'm good at, the marketing field. So. That's great. Yeah. Now, now tell us all the, the products the company has. What's the range of products that you have? Yeah, e EBS has been around since uh, 1988. Uh, we make a full range of uh, bass amps for professional use. Uh, we got the cabinets, three different lines of cabinets. Uh, we got uh, like almost 15 different uh, pedals, uh, studio quality effects. Now we're seeing a lot of, you know, legends uh, playing playing this uh, this gear. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about any of the individuals that, or, or what they say about the gear, or how they got involved? Yeah, I mean, uh, e EBS has always been an artist-oriented company. Actually, the, the first three units of our first product was sold to to Flea, Billy Talbot and uh, Jimmy Earl. So that's pretty good start for a new company. And we have started to build strong relations with uh, artists throughout the years, uh, ending up with a collaboration with Billy Sheehan on his uh, signature pedal. It's, uh, I mean, we, we, we make gear for the professional mu musicians and they know that and they come to us when they want their the best out of the, the bass sound. So. Uh, we have, the, have the, the privilege to work with a lot of legendary bass players like Stanley Clark, Marcus Miller, all these guys over the years. And uh, uh, recent years, we've also seen a lot of a lot of the, the metal guys coming over. Uh, yeah. It's just it's continue to develop our our, our business that way. Sure. So. Now tell us about Stanley Clark. What is it about your pedals or gear that he likes? Yeah, uh, Stanley Clark is uh, a long and strong relation uh, with EBS. For a while he, he, he played our amps, but uh, these days he stick to our pedals. He's using our micro bass for his upright bass. And we also did his uh, signature wah pedal, which is uh, basically the idea is uh, Stanley's idea with it. It's not using it as a wah pedal, it's using it as a tone filter to make possible for people that can afford a, a, a lambic bass to achieve a, a similar sound to the lambic basses with with a passive uh, uh, like a Fender P bass and this pedal used as a tone filler. So that's the, the idea. Uh, people don't get uh, connect the Stanley with a wah pedal but if you think of it like using it like a tone filter to achieve a sound that is you have to, to buy a, a really expensive bass. If you can achieve that with a, a standard bass and this pedal, that makes sense. So that's uh, that's our relation with Stanley. He, he's been using uh, various or effects over the years, and uh, uh, I know he's he's uh, very fond of the micro bass, which is like a favorite tool for him. So that's great. Now, besides obviously having great gear. All that you've learned in the business, what advice do you give to the young players? You know, people forming a group or trying to be out there as a, you know, their own sound. What, what advice do you give to them? Uh, my advice is uh, always work on your craft, your skills, and work on your network. If you if you if you are well connected and you are a very good player, you get the gigs with. The time will come for gigs, and don't, don't expect like uh, every company will give you free gear because that's not how the world works these days. Uh, you get the gigs, and you develop good relations with companies that you need to work together with. Yeah, you help each other. Yeah, that's uh, what 
there's uh, one of our endorsees, he said, I'm not about getting free stuff or, or getting paid to, to play our, your gear. I, I make my money from playing music and you make your money from making gear. So, and I need good gear to play my music. So that's, that's a good way to, to think about gear and how you develop your, your own career as a musician. So. That's great. Now tell us about Hendrik Linder here with Dirty Loops because I know he's about to get an award. What can you tell us about him and you know working with him? Yeah, uh, Hendrik uh, basically grew up on EBS because the school he went to they had a, a relation with EBS, uh, so there was an EBS stack in, in all the re rehearsals rooms, and uh, his teacher is a former EBS endorsee, uh, and uh, I. I picked up uh, uh, the guys from Dirty Loops four years ago, almost exactly four years. Uh, I was at a, at a gig with uh, Stone Sour in Stockholm, and uh, a friend uh, came shouting in my ear to go check out Dirty Loops YouTube. Uh, next day, I went online, saw one of the really early videos they did, and uh, called Henrik and brought the guys over to EBS. And we, had a meeting there. Two weeks later, they got picked up by Andreas Carlson, who is their manager now. He's connected them with David Foster, and they got all these things rolling. So we were just lucky to be there when it all started, and uh, it's very natural. Since Henrik has played our stuff since he started to play bass, and um, we all, yeah, it's it's it works very well the kind of things have developed but it, it takes some time even they got a great start with all this attention four years ago and they had like millions of views but it still took them four years to come out with the first album because they wanted it right they did all the these things they need to do before they get out there in front of people so but they have done their work and uh, now it's start to pay off